All right, what's up, guys? Today I'm going to explain to you what a bonding curve is, okay? Um, I know I've been talking about a bonding curve here and there um, in different videos, specifically when I've been talking about pump.fun. I've been talking about, oh, this bonding curve, and you can see this bonding curve um, on the website. Um, I'll show you here in just a moment what the bonding curve is, but I want to I want to talk about the bonding curve because I think it's fairly important in the new markets that are being created on marketplaces like pump.com, these new social... The, pump.fun, sorry, not pump.com, pump.fun, these new marketplaces that are being created, these new social networks that are being created, um, there is this concept of a bonding curve and it somewhat legitimizes, makes it fair for people to start investing. It makes it more fair, right? For people to start investing in these coins and you know, making sure that they are not completely rugged um, when people first get into them. It's somewhat of a revolutionary idea because it allows for people to um, to invest in something and then for it to be the, the price to stabilize or be maintained because of this idea or concept of a bonding curve. Let me show you real quick again what I'm talking about when I say bonding curve, right? So this is pump.fun, the site that is taking the internet by storm. And you can see over here, right here, it says bonding curve progress, 30%, okay? And what does that actually mean? So when this ticker, this coin was launched, Somebody bought into this coin to create a supply of the coin of the token and they paid for it to launch, right? And so somebody has a majority of this supply and others can start buying into this coin with a supply that they have, right? So right here it says on pump.fun, when the market cap reaches 124,000, all the liquidity from the, the bonding curve will be deposited into radium and burned. Progression increases as the price goes up. There are 588,993,114 to million tokens still available for sale in the bonding curve. And there is nine soul in the bonding curve, right? So it's this idea of allocating funds, um, you know, in this distribution of a bonding curve. And then as the price goes up, those tokens are burned so that that price maintains and stabilizes as it goes up. And it prevents the person who created the token from completely rugging anybody else who may have invested in this token, right? So it's sort of like a safety net or a safety mechanism. And it actually gives people a better incentive to buy these tokens because they know that there's a possibility that it will not go to zero. It won't be completely rugged because there's a distribution of those tokens that were burned and the supply is now less. And if the demand is higher, then that price will keep going up, right? So let's let's look at a, a bit of a more formalized definition of what the bonding curve is, okay? Um, there are a lot of different definitions of the bonding curve. I'm gonna take this one on Coinbase uh, and it explains what a bonding curve is, but it can be applied in a number of different scenarios um, across cryptocurrency and across kind of that, that whole space. So let's jump right back in to that. What is a bonding curve, okay? A bonding curve is a mathematical concept that defines the relationship between the price and supply of an asset, right? It's very much related to supply and demand of a particular asset. A bonding curve contract are smart contracts that aim to create a market for tokens independent of cryptocurrency exchanges. So these tokens are, are more or less on decentralized exchanges and they are not controlled and manipulated by centralized exchanges, which makes them somewhat risky, right? Because somebody could buy the token, buy the full supply, put out a little bit of the supply, have other people buy into the token, and then completely rug it and sell the majority of the supply, bringing that price down to zero and taking all the money that people invested in, right? That's obviously not safe. So the bonding curve is created to prevent this from happening. The value of each token tends to increase as the number of tokens issued increases according to the bonding curve, okay? So let's read a little bit more into this, understanding the bonding curve. A bonding curve, like I said, is a mathematical concept that describes, let me, let me read this a little bit closer, right? A bonding curve is a mathematical concept that describes the relationship between the price and supply of an asset. The fundamental idea behind a bonding curve is that when a person acquires an asset available in a limited quantity, each subsequent participant will have to provide slightly more for it, okay? This is because the number of available asset units decrease with each acquisition, making the asset more valuable. So as the asset gets purchased more, the number of units to purchase goes down, right? Just a simple supply and demand uh, mechanism, if you will. So this mechanism seeks to provide benefits to early participants, right? Of course, if you buy an early, as the price goes up and the, the supply goes down, the price continues to go up because more and more people want it and there's fewer and fewer of these items, okay? So that, that's kind of the first part of it, okay? Um, 
So let's read a little bit more of this. In the cryptocurrency space, we've seen the emerging bonding curve contracts, okay? What does that mean? The bonding curve contracts, okay? Um, we've seen this emerging, whoops, let's, uh, blah, blah, blah. this emerging bonding uh, curve contracts. And I'm just reading off this site. I'll put this in the, the link below, but it's helping, I think it's helping to kind of navigate what this bonding curve is. These token issuance smart contracts that aim to create market for these tokens are independent of cryptocurrency exchanges. Bonding curve contracts distribute tokens to users by calculating the token value in Ether, or in this case, SOL on Pump.Fun, and issuing them after the transaction. They also receive them and compensate with SOL or ETH, whatever the blockchain is. In both cases, the smart contract calculates the average value and bases the rate off of that. So the token creation and prices. There's no hard limit on the number of tokens that can be created in a bonding curve contract. Instead, the quantity of ETH or SOL in existence and the price curve limits how many can circulate in the market. So it kind of slowly drips out the supply so that more and more people can participate this in this as the demand goes higher without you know leaving the vast majority of the token with one particular um, owner or user, if you will. Usually bonding curve contracts ensure that the value of each token tends to increase as the number of tokens issued increase. So it's kind of like this steady flow or increase of asset value versus supply and demand. This means that more tokens are created, the value goes up and following the bonding curve, right? So as the bonding curve increases, the more tokens that are created and the value of those tokens simultaneously goes up. So th this part's important. The, the next two parts that I'm going to read are fairly important. So the role of bonding curves in cryptocurrencies, what, what does that mean and why, why is that even important, okay? Many cryptocurrencies, including the largest ones, are developed to be of a limited quantity. The scarcity is what gives cryptocurrencies their value, right? The bonding curve concept is used to manage the scarcity and the resulting price changes. It aims to maintain a balance between supply and demand, ensuring that the price of the cryptocurrency remains stable. So it's to introduce stability into these decentralized Wild West markets um, by using this mechanism called a bonding curve. Now, this last part is very, very important. Bonding curves and automated uh, market makers. So bonding curves act as the underlying mechanism for automated market makers. What's a market maker, right? It's somebody that's creating the market in the first place, and they may have a large stake in that asset or that supply of that asset, right? So bonding curves act as the underlying mechanism for automated market makers, enabling continuous liquidity without the counterpart, the counterparty complexity and volume requirements associated with a traditional order book. So it eliminates the need for somebody to pump liquidity into the market manually or by the owner dropping liquidity in the market, the counterparty, right? Um, and, and it, and it kind of self-regulates this volume requirement, the liquidity, the complexity of the supply and the demand. It somewhat regulates that all on its own. And this implies that the bonding curve aims to maintain sufficient liquidity in the market for traders to transact cryptocurrencies, okay? So this is very, very important, okay? Um, you know, when an automatic market is being created through these mechanisms like Pump.Fun has created this new kind of social network, What's the guarantee that that, that that token immediately is not going to go to zero or that immediately it's not going to be manipulated, you know, like crazy by the owner? That is what this bonding curve is trying to prevent um, in a scenario like pump.fun, okay? So now when you go back over to pump.fun and you look at the different charts, right? You look, there's a five minute chart. Let's go to like an hour. Oh, you can't go to an hour for this one. Um, but the bonding curve right here is 30%. So more supply is going to come out. Um, more as more demand comes out and yeah, people people are starting to comment on this quite a bit right but this bonding curve once it reaches 100 percent, you can say that the coin is somewhat stable somewhat legitimized it doesn't mean it's not going to go to zero it doesn't mean it can't go to zero but it means that there's less of a chance that it will be manipulated um, once that bonding curve has been fulfilled because now the supply um, is less than the demand and the price can then kind of fluctuate based on the actual interest of that particular cryptocurrency. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully you understand bonding curves a little bit better and how these markets are now going to develop it, develop in a, a decentralized kind of self-serve way without any intermediary, um, you know, stepping on top of them, regulating them or doing all these different things traditionally that have been done, um, you know, by these kind of market makers and these centralized exchanges. I'm Dan Crypto Camacho. Hopefully this was helpful and let me know what you think about the bonding curve. And we're just getting started. We're just getting started with the bonding curve.